So Winton's Violin Concerto was written back in sort of 2014-15. We premiered it in London with London Symphony Orchestra. And it's a, a there's no violin concerto that's, that's really anything like it in terms of both the compositional style, the form and shape and how materials are sort of linked through the movements. The structure is, is four movements. The first is a kind of um, rap rhapsody, has kind of quite a pastoral feeling, very intimate and personal melody to begin with takes us through a lot of different sort of dream and nightmare states. And that movement ends how the entire concerto ends, which is with what he calls a, an ancestral march. So it's, it's sort of using parts of the percussion in ways that sound very raw, kind of like sticks and stones and bones, that sort of use of percussion and like st stomping and I guess very earthy textures. Second movement is a rondo burlesque and it's really quite virtuosic for the violin but its tricky components are extremely fast and sudden tempo changes which is quite unnatural for a lot of classical musicians to do where usually sort of major tempo changes happen with some sort of gradation or it's really a new movement. This is uh, quite a challenge for us to go also into different meters. So we're sometimes in fives, we're sometimes using sevens. And that um, is, is, is a nice, healthy challenge for us all collectively. <laughs> um, that then sort of gives way to a long cadenza that again takes you into lots of different textures and forms and worlds. The challenge for me as the storyteller and kind of the protagonist in a way is to actually physically and sound-wise and texturally shift into a totally different state. That then leads directly into the third movement, which is uh, a blues form, which is also really quite challenging for all of us because the the form of sort of 12 bars that then repeats, but in a different, a, a completely different textural sound world is quite unnatural to, to us to do. So to work out how you get conversation going between the solo instrument and the orchestra in different sections of the orchestra, to work out how that that feels natural. For example, if you listen to Winton and the Jazz at Lincoln Centre Orchestra and you listen to how they converse with one another and how they communicate, it's, it's so natural but so perfect. And it, it feels literally like people are, are, are talking. And for us as an, as an orchestra that are not used to expressing in that way, it's really quite challenging to do that and to keep it so that you're moving as one and the collective kind of stays together, but it doesn't sound stilted and it doesn't sound forced. Last movement is a hootenanny, it's a party, it's a everybody get together, but it's also a competition between the soloist and the orchestra in terms of how it's structured, I play, they play, I play, they play. So we, we kind of um, fight each other all the time, but also it, it kind of breaks down in the end to a, a real call and response that then becomes more and more competitive. The orchestra demonstrates a style, I, I demonstrate a technique. And it's kind of like we're trying to see who wins but in the end um, the the sections get shorter and shorter and it sort of then fuses together in a final ragtime and we, we return obviously to the the ancestral march that's the end of the piece and I I disappear off into the distance <laughs> the orchestra is absolutely I mean they just sound in, in, incredible and the hall is beautiful. The sound is just sort of carrying out there. Um, it's a very big orchestration for this particular piece, so um, that can be both a blessing and a curse sometimes. Like some of the musicians are having to play a little bit less, but that's the case all over the world. If you have a you know one violin against five trumpets, we're going to lose. So <laughs> they have to sometimes play softer. I almost feel guilty, but you know it's just it's it's one of those things. But it's a st stunning place to play.